need to drop for my desired velocity, and I like 1,300 feet per second, because that's about the limit to where it'll cycle it on. Did a nice job there. Think cut up primer. Pan in here, we'll see. I've got a bunch of loads we're gonna be pattern testing, but these are the four that I've loaded so far. You'll see. Looks pretty good. I got another short video I'm going to put together here for you. Um, I've been noticing some things lately in some of my patterns and uh, the wads that I've been picking up. And what I've noticed is that I have wads like this. And if you look, this is a B&P TUW SBL 28. This is the one ounce wad that it's used in the lightning steel manual. And if you're seeing what I'm seeing as I turn this slowly, there's holes in the wad and that's not good. Why would I want to take a high dollar shotgun that costs you a thousand dollars or more and take a chance on scratching the barrel? There's people that use factory loads that use this wad, and these wads, look what they're doing. They got holes in them. Another one, y'all will recognize this. Uh, Precision Reloading calls this the TUWGL12, but it's just a Gualandi wad. I think they call it the Super Mag. But um, if you look, I got a pellet embedded in the base of the wad i can't dig it out with my finger now but these have holes in them and this pedal here did not come from this wad but i just was able to recover the pedal and the pedal has just barely the starts of it um smaller shot won't do it as bad but this is number fours and number four shot has several tiny holes in it and this was only going 1360 feet per second so I mean it's not like it was screaming out the barrel because it doesn't have to be you know 1550 or 1600 if you don't want it to be it just depends on how good a shot you are and what your shooting conditions are going to be but anyway <clears throat> factory wads which you've seen this one in my last video the 16 gauge steel shot shootout factory wads are very thick and they're very stiff and they're less prone to the um, shot from making holes in the wads, the 16 gauge, this is from Federal. It's the same way, no holes in it. This is the uh, Remington wad, but you see that right there? There's a little hole in that Remington factory wad. So even the factories are susceptible, and this was number twos, to doing that and this in the factory load, this pedal did not even separate. So they tell you that it doesn't affect your patterns and really it didn't. My pattern was just as good as it's ever been with these. So anyways, what can we do to make sure that this doesn't happen to us? Well, First of all, you're, you're probably not gonna be able to do much of anything to keep holes from developing in these imported steel shot wads. Both these front wads, the, the BNP wad and the Gualandi wad, I uh, hope I'm saying that right, are Italian. And these back here are uh, American with uh, Remingtons on each end and Federal in the middle. But what can we do to, to fix that? Well. What this is sitting on, and I'll move these wads right quick. What this is sitting on is transparency film. Transparency film is made out of mylar. One side of the transparency film is gonna be textured because whenever they print things on it, it has to have a texture and you can hear it. It, it has to have a texture in order to accept 
You hear that much different on the other side. Has to have a texture to accept the ink. Otherwise it just runs right off. So we can cut this and tuck it down inside our wads. I have some that I've cut. We can cut this and put it and tuck it down inside our wad, roll it up, and you just stick it in there when it's down inside the shell. Now, I would need to trim some of this off of there, if you can see that, to make it flush with the top of the wad so it wouldn't impede the crimp. Um, if I'm gonna use, this wad is very similar to some of the wads that you can buy. And it is, whenever you're loading with it, if you feel like you need to and would like the extra protection if you're shooting, say you're loading BBs, triple Bs, Ts, Fs, I mean, you're getting into some pretty good size shot. Just take this right here, roll it up, tuck it down inside there and let it unfold. Well, it does better when it's inside the shell. Tuck it down inside there, let that unfold. I'm gonna see, you can see that mylar is full length of that wad and it is going to make sure, this stuff is the toughest stuff you're ever gonna get. This will make sure that you have no chance for the pellets to break through the mylar and break through the wad. A side result of putting the mylar in your wad is going to be that you will get tighter patterns just a little bit. And <clears throat> you might like it to do that. I have some, I've got these labeled as one ounce, just, just real quick. And these are labeled as seven eighths ounce loads. They're cut to different, not necessarily different lengths, different widths, different uh, well, it's the height if you put it in the in the wad, and I'll just trim them after I get them cut like this, and they're real quick to just trim to fit. If you have Tom Roster's bismuth manual or his heavy shot manual, he gives measurements for what he calls he calls these shot wrappers. He has measurements that he tells you about his to put them in the wad, cut them, put them in there, and they'll be just fine. You can take a ruler and measure and just mark and cut them with a pair of scissors, or if you have one of these, you can lay it here and that will cut it just fine. I used to, if you notice the seven eighths ounce, have black marker on them because that's what I did was I measured and I had just a bunch of rectangles on this paper, on this clear sheet. And I always put my ink, can you guess which side? Yeah, I bet you could. On the rough side. I always mark on the rough side because it takes the ink and then cut those out. But now, since I've got this, I don't even know what those things are called, slicer, guillotine board, whatever. Y'all let me know in the comments. Um, now I just measure it off there to where I know it needs to be and just start slicing. But if you'll do that, you will protect the barrel of your shotgun from pellets coming through the wad in steel shot and even harder shot. You'll be able to give your barrel as much protection as modern technology will let you. And you will not hesitate, you will not sacrifice pattern density, you won't sacrifice um, velocity it will actually enhance your pattern just a little bit. But anyways, that's Mylar Wrap, the benefits of it, 
and the helps of it, but look at that. That's just pitiful. All those holes in that right there. This was going uh, 1540 feet per second, and it did that. So that's pretty, that's pretty bad. I would not want to send that down my Browning. Not like that. Not knowing that. Send that down a Japanese Browning or even a new A5 Browning, a Maxis. Mm -mm. Not without a Mylar wrap. So you can either buy Mylar wrap from the major outlets that sell it, like Precision and such, or you can find you some of these sheets at an office supply store. Schools don't even hardly use this stuff anymore because everything is online and uh, just not necessary. So you might be able to find a teacher that has some of this stuff and they'll just give it to you. So anyways, that's what I got for today. I will, I will be back soon in the videos myself. Just a little quick update. I have had eye surgery and I had vision correction because I was extremely nearsighted and it's doing well. I have 2015 distance vision and they will adjust, and you heard that right, they will adjust my eyes to be able to read up close 2020 without special reading glasses. So anyways, until I get all that done, I've been told to take it easy from doing too much rough stuff. So here in a little while, I'll be back in videos shooting and loading and you'll see my ugly face again. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell notification. It'll let you know every time we load a video up and we'll do our best to bring you something next week that will help you out in your reloading and hopefully make you more successful out in the woods this duck and goose season. We'll see y'all later.